Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over Inferno of the Star Mounts, a mythic dragon from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. So, let's get into it. To start out this video, I just have a quick question for you all, for the viewership, which is, how much would you all like to see a video of Drizzt? If you weren't sure why I'm asking, Drizzt is currently in the vault, and while Octagon is absolutely amazing, and they support my channel, and I love everything they do for me, uh, they aren't sending me the exclusive cards for this set. So they didn't send me T-Mat, they didn't send me um, the Beholder, they didn't send me Minsk, and they haven't sent me Drizzt. So if I am to make a video on Drizzt, I would need to go and buy Drizzt myself. Now I've actually already exhausted the budget that I had for this set um, for me personally. However, I know I make a whole bunch of videos for y'all. So if there are enough of you who want to see a Drizzt video, I will go ahead and pick that up. So leave a comment in the comment section if you would particularly like to see a Drizzt video, uh, and if, if that's a card that you're just wondering if you want to pick up or not. My own personal plan was to pick it up from Fiblethip, since Drizzt is going to have a full art variant. So Drizzt and Minsk both have full art variants that will be uh, coming to the game in Fiblethip, which is when I was planning to review them myself. But nonetheless, I wanted to ask you guys that anyways. There's also going to be another video on Zeriel coming out very soon after this one, uh, but I wanted to make sure to get this one out just because Inferno of the Star Mounts was the mythic from Fiblethip the last time that it ran. And so if you see this video in time, then the next time that you see Fib Fiblethip in the vault, hopefully Fiblethip will have Inferno of the Star Mounts available for you to pick up. Now, the card itself. Inferno of the Star Mounts is a 22 mana, 8 8 flying legendary haste dragon. And it has quite a few abilities attached to it. So, the first is that it cannot have its mana drained or raised. The second is that it's going to activate four red gems. And when those gems are matched or destroyed by you, this creature gets plus two plus zero until end of turn, and then the card's level increases by one. Then, if this card's level is five or more, deal 20 damage to any opposing target. Now, you don't see the little level icon on this full art variant. However, it starts at level one, so you need to actually match or destroy all four of the activated gems that it makes in any given turn to get it to level five to deal that additional 20 damage to any opposing target. It also has, as long as this creature's power is 16 or greater, it gains double strike and trample. And then finally, at the end of your turn, this card's level becomes one. Now, there happens to be quite a lot that you can do with this dragon. When the set first came out and I first started playing with it, I felt more like this was a card that needed other cards to shine, but if you had those other cards, it was an absolute powerhouse. So if you're able to pair Inferno of the Star Mounts as an example with T-Mat, T-Mat is going to automatically fetch the Inferno and then make it so it reinforces on entering the battlefield from the T-Mat buff, which means that it's going to be coming in as 16 power, which means it's going to have double strike on it automatically. So you're getting a flying, haste, double strike, 16-16 dragon for effectively 11 mana which is absolutely ridiculous. So this is an amazing card to pair with T-Mat. If you pair it with the UR Dragon as well as T-Mat, then it's gonna be hitting twice and drawing you a minimum of two cards to give each of them 16 mana because of, sorry, the UR Dragon, the Ur Dragon, right? Uh, because of the Ur Dragon's effect. But beyond that, this happens to be one of the cards that I've played with the most in this set. I've just had a lot of fun with this dragon and there actually happens to be a really cool sort of hidden mechanic with it also. So the activating four red to give the creature plus two plus zero until end of turn, and then you increase the level, and if the level is five or more, deal 20 damage to any opposing target, 
can actually be abused in a little bit of a silly way that is really, really fun. And I found it kind of by accident because my opponent had a Hyxis down and my Inferno of the Star Mounts hit my opponent and then got disabled. And then on my opponent's next turn, they, they, they had white gem conversion on the board. It was a white deck and they destroyed their Hyxis. And then on my turn, the first, the first match that I made uh, only matched, I want to say, one or two of the gems that were activated, but nonetheless, this thing's level was my five or more, and it wound up dealing the damage. So I learned from that that if you disable Inferno of the Star Mounts on your turn, then at the end of your turn, its level doesn't become one again, because for it to have that ability that states at the end of your turn, this card's level becomes one, it must be enabled to go back to level one. So if it gets disabled when you've already buffed it and increased its level, it won't actually go back levels, which means that you can make it so that this thing is doing like 80 damage in a turn in conjunction with cards like Zerta that are gonna be popping gems to any target you want, which winds up being really silly and really fun. All you need is a way to disable it. And there happen to be a great many ways to do that. Now, I did mention that this was a dragon that I sort of felt initially like you had to have some of those other cards to make it powerful, and that's absolutely not the case. However, you do actually need to have Planeswalkers that are fairly high level, because otherwise the 22 mana winds up just being way too much. Even if you're running just like the original Chandra from Origins, and that's your only red walker, you're going to struggle to really get a lot of use out of this dragon, because the 22 mana will wind up being crippling. Now, if you've already got the regular art variant like I do, you do not need to get the full art. Although I've got to say that this full art card happens to be quite possibly my favorite full art card in Puzzle Quest. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. If if I if I wasn't a content creator, I would get this card because the full art card because of how beautiful it is. Just so I could play with it. Um, but my being a content creator means that I need to conserve my resources a little bit more so that I can pick up all the new stuff as it comes out and make more content for you guys. So nonetheless, I want to go ahead and showcase some cards that the Inferno of the Star Mounts works really well with. Now, the first of those cards to highlight is absolutely Tmat. This thing is going to fetch the dragon, it's going to make it cost less mana, and it's going to make it so that it automatically enters the battlefield with a power that is 16 or greater, which is going to give it double strike. So Tmat and the Ur Dragon are absolutely phenomenal pairings for the Inferno of the Sky Mounts. Now beyond those, another one that I mentioned is Zerda. So Zerda is a phenomenal pairing for Inferno of the Sky Mounts because with the companion ability, you're going to be destroying and triggering three of your activated gems every turn. So that means that you really just need to match one of the activated gems as long as you don't have too many other things that activate on the battlefield. So you have to play a little bit cleverly because Zerda's companion requires that you have four or more creatures or supports with activate effects, but you're able to make it so that the dragon is able to hit that 20 damage consistently every single turn using Zerda with the dragon. Now, there also happens to be a few other ways to pseudo break the dragon that are absolutely delightful. Uh, and that is to firstly pair it with white. Uh, and if you pair it with white, you can actually pair it with, uh, I meant to hit rare, um, but you can actually pair it with, bup, 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 where are you? Siege Striker. So Siege Striker has when it attacks, you may disable each other creature you control until end of turn. If you do, this creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn. X is the number of other creatures and other creature reinforcements you control. So what this guy is going to do is he's going to make it so that you can t disable your Inferno every single turn so that you could then just wind up hitting your opponent with a fully leveled up Inferno every single turn because the Inferno's level would never go down ever because it would be disabled at end of turn. Now, if you don't have this because it's a rare, fortunately for us, there happens to be a common from Origins called Alchemist's Vial that is colorless that is going to enable you to disable target creature until the beginning of your next turn and draw one card. So you could use, you could just draw into these, keep them stored for when you get the Inferno down and attacking. Then you start using these on the Inferno to make sure that it doesn't go back to level one. 
and then you start piling on the damage against your opponent. Now for the gameplay in this video, I'm going to show you a few different decks. I'm going to show you the Inferno in conjunction with Tiamat and the Ur Dragon, so you can see it at full power. I'm going to be showing you with Zerda, so you can see the Zerda Alchemist's Vile combo that I'm talking about, where you can just start plowing your opponent for damage with the Activate ability. And then finally, I'm going to be showing you the Dragon with a relatively popper plus deck it's, it's just popper with i think an origins rare in it because i see origins rares as being kind of like uncommons in a way just because it's origins so it's pretty easy to get a lot of those so let's go ahead and check out that gameplay the first match is going to be with jessica thrice reborn and the popper plus deck now <laughs> i know i got some pretty crazy matches in this particular match but or I should say swaps, that would be the correct terminology. But I felt like this really showed off just how well the Inferno is able to play in a deck that is built around it. Now, I know I didn't get a video up about Jessica Thrice Reborn, and I really wanted to get a video up on it. I do, obviously, as you can see, have her. Uh, Octagon was kind enough to send me this walker so that I could try and get a video up on Jessica. Uh, but it, it sort of, she just sort of came into the vault at a fairly bad time and then I wound up having just a complete creative brain fart and so my video for Jessica never got up I had a bunch of footage of her but nonetheless this is going to be some footage for you guys if you especially would like to see a video for Jessica I know that a few of you have left comments on other videos uh, but if you're watching this and you really want to see a video on her go ahead and let me know in the comments for this video here so the goal with Jessica and the Inferno is to be spamming Jessica's second ability with the Inferno. Now, I am absolutely going to pay this 8 life here because Westgate Regent is one of the scariest cards to go up against in Standard, maybe even in the game, just because it, it just snowballs so fast. That thing just gets so powerful so quickly that you really have to get rid of it or you lose. It winds up being that simple. So here I'm trying to just get some gem conversion down. So you'll notice that I am going to spike field hazard my Inferno here. And that's just to get another red gem converter on the battlefield. Ideally, it will enable me to match more of the gems for the star mount and then get more buffs on the star mount. But with that said, I'm, all, I'm running basically as many different cards that can destroy gems in the uncommon range as I can, if, if you see the deck. So I'm going to be using the Thrice Empowered ability here on the star mounts, which is going to make it go from dealing 8 damage to 64 damage because it's going to give it the buff and it's going to give it double strike because of the star mount's ability. Inferno of the star mounts pairs incredibly well with Jessica Thrice Reborn because Jessica basically guarantees that your Inferno is going to be swinging in like a wrecking ball uh, every single turn. So the Rambler is going to come down here. It's going to destroy a bunch of the gems, powering up the Inferno even more. So it swings in for 72 damage. And here I'm just kind of hoping that my gem conversion will let me use my second ability again. And it does. So I'm able to go ahead, use my second ability again on the star mount, boost it up to 64 damage, not including uh, the red gems that I'm going to be matching here, which is going to be boosting it back to 72 damage to Karn's face. And as you can imagine, even if your supporting cards aren't that great, hitting your opponent for up to 72 damage a turn for just having one of those dragons is pretty nasty. Let's check out the next game. The second match is going to be the Koth... Ur Dragon and T Mat build. And I wound up having like, I want to say somewhere in the two to three hours of footage for this realm just because I play this deck so much. I actually normally play it with Velomachus, but I decided to change it around, put in the Ur Dragon instead of Velomachus for this particular video just because with Velomachus, because it has vigilance and goes into the first creature slot. It's harder for the Inferno Dragon to really shine as the primary card, uh, just because the Velomachus does its damage first. Now, with that said, it's still like insane. The two of them together do so much haste damage; it's entirely unfair. Like, there's just it just feels like there's no recovery from it once that comes down. But nonetheless, this particular this particular match I chose because it highlights the Inferno Dragon so well. 
Uh, and I don't draw TMAT, which is perfect because TMAT makes it feel like everything is overpowered that's a dragon. Whereas this just makes it so that the Inferno is super powered as a dragon. Now, I've got a pretty sweet match here with the black into red. And so I figured here the black into red, as long as I don't get like another green or red or black match, I'd be able to cast the Valakut Awakening. And because it made a white match, I was able to, which is perfect. Uh, so that, that actually gets me another gem converter, which I want because this is Koth. And then I also am going to get to draw cards and I draw into the Ur Dragon, which is really nice. So here, because I have enough mana to play the Ur Dragon, I could just use Ruinous Ultimatum to get rid of my opponent's creature and then wait another turn before powering up my dragon. But I figured what, I mean, three loyalty is really not a big deal. The Eidolon of Obstruction makes it so you lose three loyalty when you activate an ability. So I figured I wouldn't use a second ability here anyways. And this way, the star mount is going to attack and then draw me two cards with 27 mana for the ur dragon coming into play and so that that plus eight buff will make it so that if i drew into t mat or if i drew into another ur dragon or if i drew into another star mount then they would just come to my hand with full mana and so i was just sort of hedging on the possibility of getting it and the first one gets me the ur dragon and the second one gets me a star mount. And so I'm drawing those cards and gaining that mana because of the Ur Dragon's ability. Uh, but it just shows just how crazily well this dragon pairs with the Ur Dragon. So Daxos is definitely going to die this turn. There's nothing that Daxos can do about this here. And I wind up drawing into another Inferno Star Mount. It's just this just this match was just absolutely ridiculous in terms of drawing into the Star Mounts and all of that kind of goodness. So I've got my Star Mount here at 74 power it's really easy to overlook the damage on this thing because it has double strike but it does just so much damage it's insane so here we're going to power it up twice more to 82 damage and that's the end of daxos this final match is definitely my favorite match uh, you'll see that i'm making a move that you might be questioning in that i threw away a castle embereth i'm playing koth and i threw away a first turn castle embereth the thing is is when you're playing this deck, I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the video, but when you're playing the Zerta deck, you need to be really careful about which cards you let onto the battlefield that are going to activate gems. And so you do not actually want to play the Castle Embereth. You just want to have it in the deck to fulfill Zerta's companion requirement. That is very important for the deck. So I am able to match two of the activated gems right there from the pyromancer's goggles they gave me a magnum opus which is going to let me draw cards and give them half mana and it's going to draw me the shatter skull smashing which is absolutely perfect that's exactly what i wanted to draw there because it enabled me to draw into the inferno of the star mounts and that gave it and it gave it half mana so i'm going to be able to play it this turn i'm going to be able to go ahead wipe my opponent's board i'm able to get the inferno down here and uh, this this is this is just this is this is definitely my favorite of the decks with the star mount. Uh, it's just a very flavorful deck. It's definitely not the best deck that you can use the star mount in, but it's really fun. So you'll see that this is my alchemist vial deck, and so I'm actually going to play the Bit blister spit gremlin first. And so by playing the blister spit gremlin first, it will make it so that I pop activated gems for each spell I play. So here I'm just checking. What are the different gems on the battlefield in terms of like, are they Infernos? And I wanted to make the red into potentially black um, match over there. So I, I don't need all the things in my hand. I'm going to get rid of the Ruinous Ultimatum here. And I'm going to take that red into black match and just get all those sweet, sweet, sweet level ups there for my Star Mount. Now you see that the Star Mount's at level four. And now I'm going to disable it with the Alchemist's Vial. This is very important. So... It does wind up getting rid of my other activate gems, but you'll see that it's my opponent's turn and the dragon is still level four. The level doesn't reset. So now on this new turn, it activates four more gems. And now that it's activated four more gems, I am able to go completely ham with the activations. So I'm going to go ahead and use my first ability, destroy gems. The goal here is just to try and get as many of those red gems triggered as possible. There's the first one leveling it to five, dealing 20 damage. There's the second one leveling it to six, dealing 20 damage. 
And then here I get to go ahead and pick which gem I'm going to match next, but you can be rest assured that I will be matching another one of those red gems. So there it is. And that's going to level up the star mount again. We're going to get to do another 20 damage. We have now done 60 damage directly to the opponent's face. I'm going to use the alchemist's vial here to pop the last of my red gems getting the star mount to 8 and dealing 80 damage with the activate ability, and that's the end of Calyx. In conclusion, this card is an absolute blast to play with. It's a very strong card, and it is very much worth your 400 mana crystals when it enters Fiblethip's vault next. Now, if you are a free-to-play player who needs to conserve their mana crystals, and you will not have enough mana crystals to be able to get this, and then let's hypothetically say that Tmat is the next card that enters, so you're not going to be able to have 800 crystals within the next week or two, just because of how Fiblethip runs, then I would save those crystals for Tmat. However, if you are able to spare the crystals to get this card, and you don't already have it, it is 100% worth it, regardless of what your collection size of cards is, However, like I did mention earlier in the video, you are going to want to make sure that you have a good red Planeswalker to pair this with. So a Planeswalker like Koth, Koth is definitely my favorite Planeswalker to use this with. Jessica Thrice Reborn is another phenomenal choice for this Planeswalker. Brokon is another really good choice. Domri is a good choice. So there's really actually just a lot of really good choices for you to run this card. However, I... I've gotten so much use out of this card. I want to say I've probably used this more than anything but Tmat, as Tmat is mastered, but this one's not quite mastered, but almost mastered from the set. So definitely, definitely worth it. Definitely a good time. So thanks so much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.